It's the all-new J-Mac News Show. You haven't heard the news until you've heard J-Mac on KSL News Radio. Good afternoon. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us today. What an amazing day of breaking news here on KSL News Radio. We'll try and cover it all for you. But first, and always first on the J-Mac News Show, it's the attack. This is the J-Mac News Attack. And of course, the news attack today, five points of five minutes, is about the sit-in by Democrats in the House. It just barely ended. Did it do any good? What is it all for? We'll tell you about it in the attack. Takeaway number five. five. So more than 24 hours ago, House Democrats decided to shut down the House of Representatives to demand a vote on gun legislation. This, of course, in the wake of the Orlando shootings. We will occupy this floor. We will no longer be denied a right to vote. Uh, kind of like Occupy Wall Street, only this is Occupy the House of Representatives. Have they been denied their right to vote? Well, Paul Ryan says not so much. So just yesterday, the Democrats offered this gun measure they claim they want, and it failed on a bipartisan basis in committee. There was a vote. It was in the committee through regular order, and the vote failed. Paul Ryan says there was a vote. And it failed. So was this just all a big publicity stunt? Of course it was. Number four. Number four. Um, My number four point when it comes to the sit-in by the House Democrats, something that they were chanting and something that they were asking for, once again leads me to question their entire effort. They said no bill, no break. They also yelled no fly, no buy. What are they asking for? Well, that's key. Disrupting the House of Representatives and the normal process of business, you better be asking for something that will have an impact on what brought you there in the first place. That's the Orlando shooting. What are they asking for? If you're on a no-fly list, you can't buy a firearm. They're asking for increased background checks. Would that have stopped the Orlando shooting? No, he was not on a no-fly list. Would that have stopped the San Bernardino shootings? No, they were not on a no-fly list. Would the increased background checks have done that? No, no, no. They are disrupting the people's business and, quite frankly, looking like a bunch of upset children demanding the passage of proposals that would not solve any of the problems that they say brought them there in the first place. Takeaway number three. three. And this is key, Paul Ryan saying why he does not support their requests. We are not going to take away a citizen's due process rights. We're not going to take away a citizen's constitutional rights without due process. Now, this is absolutely key. It is my number three point when it comes to the Democratic sit-in. Paul Ryan is exactly right. How can you allow the removal of someone's constitutional right to bear arms without giving them the right, the other constitutional right, to innocent until proven guilty in a court of law? We cannot simply ignore the Constitution when we don't like the consequences of what it says. Fight to change it if certain elements have become outdated. But simply allowing the federal government to take away core, specifically listed rights in the Constitution with nothing more than a suspicion would be the greatest overreach of power in our nation's history. Number two. Number two. Now you will hear Democrats say this is not the first time there has been a sit in. The Republicans did something similar. When Nancy Pelosi was in charge, this was over energy policy. Well, let's be clear, and this is my number two point, it's not exactly the same. Not that I'm out to defend Republicans, but that sit-in was during a recess. It did not disrupt the people's business. And interesting to note, during that sit-in, Nancy Pelosi shut down the house lights just like Paul Ryan did to the Republicans this time. It seems like a bunch of kids fighting on the playground, doesn't it? And J-Mac News Attack. Takeaway number number one. one. Uh, My number one takeaway regarding the sit-in by the House Democrats, this is a huge breakdown for how our country operates and how the House operates. (laughs) 
The chair appreciates that members will differ on matters of policy and will seek to express those differences. But the chair would hope that the business of the House could be conducted in a fashion that, represent, that respects positively on the dignity and the decorum of this institution to which we all belong. Wow, it's pretty amazing. Here's the deal. We choose representatives and they go to this house to debate and to pass laws. How can representation function properly when all of the people's business can simply be shut down anytime one side of the aisle feels that they're not being heard. If you want change, go to the voters. Convince them. Change hearts and minds. I don't care which party decides to use this sit-in tactic. It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. It sends a message that representation and the vote of the people, oh, yeah, it has no real value, does it? The J-Mac, J-Mac 3 News Attack.